Good morning and welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. I'm really glad you're here. Visitors, a very warm welcome to you. I just want to tell you, some of you have reached out through email and even sent me cards and letters uh, in the mail, and I'm really excited. Thank you for doing that. It's so cool hearing from people all around the world who are watching this. So thanks. And I hope someday that our paths will get to cross. That would be really awesome. Members, thanks for joining us this morning. I'm really honored you're here. I just want to say thank you to our members. Members, you are doing so much with your generosity and supporting the congregation. Thank you. We're doing wonderful work because of you. I cannot thank you enough, and I cherish you. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, I want you to know <clears throat> this world's a crazy place right now. I know that. There's a lot of chaos, a lot of everything going on. Remember, that Jesus is with you. He is your foundation, your rock, and your fortress. I am praying for every one of you daily. I'm asking God to strengthen your immune systems and to keep you in good health. Please reach out to me if you need anything at all. There are multiple ways to do that. Any prayers? And don't forget, if you want communion, give me a call, send me a message or a text. We're doing communion here at church, or I can arrange it if you can't get out and try to bring that to you safely. And we're doing it privately, and we have all these safe practices in place. So if you, you want the sacrament, the sacrament's available. Let me know, and we will serve you in this way. I pray that the Lord Jesus will bless your worship today, and that he will fill you with his Holy Spirit, and that you will find the peace that passes understanding. Once again, welcome and God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered together to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Almighty God in his mercy has, has given his son Jesus Christ to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ's church by his authority and at his command, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi everybody, welcome. It's good to see you. Thanks for stopping by for our children's message. Hold on a little bit. Um, I'm kind of hungry, so this, would you mind, would you mind waiting a, a little bit? Mm, mm. Oh, it's so good. Mm, 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 mm. Just hold on one second. Mm, sorry, hold on one second. Mm, 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 oh, mm, good. Mm, my gosh. Do you guys ever get hungry? Mm, mm. Oh, yeah, so good. You ever get hungry? Yeah, we get hungry sometimes. I don't know about you, but when I get hungry, I get grumpy. I get hangry when I'm hungry. And sometimes I'm not very nice. And oops, and Miss Stephanie knows. And she'll say, have you eaten today? And then she'll bring me a bag of chips and say, eat these chips. And all of a sudden I feel better. But we need to eat, right? Eating is good for us. Do you like food? I bet you like food. What's your favorite food to eat? Oh, pizza. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hamburgers. I love hamburgers. Anybody, ice cream? Well, yeah, why not? Ice cream's good too. Let's have that for dinner tonight. I love it. But we eat food because it takes care of us. It gives us energy. It keeps us healthy. Food is important, and God has designed our bodies to have food so that we can be healthy and have strong immune systems and be able to live every day for Him, right? Well, in just the same way, God gives you another type of food. And it's not something you can eat. It's a Bible, right? Uh, 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 mm. Uh, it doesn't taste too good. No, that's not how you eat the Word of God. Of course not. But God gives us His Word as food for our souls, food for our hearts, food for our faith, and food for our lives. And in this food, He comes into our lives in the power of Jesus and His Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to fill us with His love, to forgive us our sins, and to keep us with Him forever just like this because He's our God. You know, we're his children, and he loves us so much. You are his child, and he wants to take care of you every day. And in fact, not only does he want to, he does in so many ways. And one of the ways he does that is providing us baked lays to eat for food and ice cream for dinner. Another way is giving you his word in the Bible. And every time you hear that word, and every time you read that word, and every time you talk about it with mom and dad or your friends, the Holy Spirit is working in you to give you strength every day so that you can live for Jesus and share his love. That's pretty awesome, huh? So don't forget, every day eat your good food and also spend time with mom and dad or yourselves taking a look at the Bible because it's good for you and it does a body good. Hey, have a great evening, all right? Or day of worship, whatever it is. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Our old, our old Testament lesson for today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love of David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel. He has glorified you. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson from today comes from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and for their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel, and not all are children of Abraham, because they are his offspring, but through Isaac shall your offspring be named." 
This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise who are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said. About this time next year, I will return and Sarah will, shall have a son. And not only so, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had nothing either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls, she was told, the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. When the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. He'll give them something to eat. They said to him, We only have five loaves here and two fishes. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over, and those who ate were about five thousand besides women and children. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Having heard the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us respond with joy and thanksgiving in confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes our sorrows, heals our wounds, and drives away our fear. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the heart's unrest. Is manna to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. Dear name the rock on which I build my shield and hiding place, my never failing treasury filled with boundless stores of grace. Jesus, shepherd, guardian, friend, my prophet, priest, and king, my Lord, my life, my way, my end, accept the praise I bring. I see thee as thou art, I'll praise thee as I am. 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, give us your word today and by the power of your Holy Spirit, as Martin Luther says, help us to read, mark, and inwardly digest it for the strengthening of our faith in you and love and service to our fellow brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come and eat. Come and eat. You know, I grew up uh, in East Tennessee in the Appalachian Mountains. And I think this was very prevalent there. Maybe it is in other places too. I, I, I probably pretty sure because Lutherans are good at this all over the place. But especially was good in my hometown. I loved my grandparents and my grandma especially. And one of the greatest things ever, I remember growing up, even when I was a little boy and then when I started driving on my own, and even when I went away to college and then on to seminary, or even when I was a, a pastor and I'd go back to visit, it never failed. You'd walk into grandma's house and she would have something to eat. And she would want you to eat, whether it was her homemade biscuits, which I loved, or cabbage and noodles, which I loved, or fried okra, or fried green tomatoes, you name it. Grandma had it, and it was the best food in the world. Nobody could cook like grandma. Mom's the second, second best. I've been close to that, yeah, yeah. But, but grandma, there's something about grandma, right? And man, you just knew that with every bite of that food, her love was just pouring into you. And the amazing thing is she would enjoy uh, watching us eat. And I think that it went away to her. It was like we were loving her back. It was pretty awesome to think about. And now when I go home and I go to visit, mom always makes sure that I have my favorites there. She makes these wonderful pie crust, crust cookies. She makes the best homemade frosting I've ever eaten. And a lot of times I just want the bowl of frosting. Don't even worry about a cake. But that's kind of the way we show love a lot of times, right? I think that happens a lot. I see it in the church and I, I see it. I just see it. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. When we think about families, when we come together for holidays or we come together for special uh, occasions or family reunions, there's always a smorgasbord of food, right? To eat and to enjoy. Yeah. And you know what they say, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. I guess that's true too. Food plays a very important role in our lives. Food is a way in which we share love with each other. Food is a way in which we share fellowship with each other, which is so vastly important as we uh, spend time with each other. Food is also important for our health. We need food to stay healthy. We need food to have energy. In fact, just recently I was doing a, a project and I put into this project about daily calor caloric intake. And I was surprised that my body needs almost 2,000 calories a day just to do its basic functions. Breathing, blinking the eyes, all its basic functions. I was like, wow, that's amazing. Who even knew that? 2,000 calories almost for just basic functions. I would have never guessed. Food is important. Food is very important. It plays an important role in all aspects of our life. And as I said in the children's message earlier, for me it's vastly important because I don't get food. I turn into one of those Snickers commercials and I get a little hangry. So I, I got to make sure I eat. Oh, how God does it even more. Oh, how God gives us love and nourishment and strength as he feeds us. And oh, how important is it to eat of this spiritual food? I don't know many people that would, obviously there are some exceptions, right? But not many people go and skip meals intentionally or decide not to eat anymore. I mean, that's just kind of, we don't do that, right? Our body has these things that warn us like hunger pains or we get dehydrated or maybe we get weak after put in the hospital if we don't eat. These things are important for us. But I'm really worried today that people don't spend the time in the nourishment of God's word. Luther does say in his uh, writings, read Mark and inwardly digest God's word. Inwardly digest it. That point of knowing that God's food is nourishment and food. We need that every day. A lot of people think, well, I, I can go to church whenever I want to and, and, and I'll miss here and there and go once occasionally, maybe every so often or Christmas and Easter and that's good and I put in my faith. No. The reality is when we don't spend time in God's word, we don't spend time daily in his word and devotions. We don't spend time in word and worship. We don't spend time with the word in fellowship with each other because in fellowship with each other, we're sharing God's love. We're sharing God's word and that's vastly important. We don't spend time bearing each other's burdens and in fulfilling the love of Christ. As St. Paul tells us, we don't spend time being nourished with God and with Jesus. Our faith grows weak and you can see it. You can see it today in our society. 
hatred, racism, grumpiness, people who uh, are more apt to share their opinions, and then if you disagree with them, not like you, people holding grudges, families falling apart, social media, look at how bad it is. Everybody gravitating to the negative and not celebrating the positive and all the blessings that Jesus has given us, and the list goes on and on and on. Even more people walking away from the faith, not spending time with God, not putting his commands and his, his, his love first in our lives to share with others and um, to share with him. It happens all around us, and we can think of even more examples if we want to, but this is a direct result of you and I not spending time with God and being nourished and immersed in his love and food that he gives us. This is vastly important for our Christian life, just as earthly food is important to our earthly life. We need to feast upon Jesus, who is the Word. John 1 says, the Word was with God and is God, and the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Jesus is the Word. We need to feast upon him for that strength that we need. And when we do, we will find peace that passes understanding. And a lot of people are looking for that, and we desperately need that. We need that in our world because there's no peace out there, brothers and sisters. There's no peace. And as I said in a message a few weeks ago, that peace can only be found in here in the depth of the soul as it's given to you by Jesus Christ himself, which can only be connected in the word. We need forgiveness. That forgiveness only comes through the power of his word. We need love, his love. That love comes only in the power of his word. We need him to be our rock, our fortress, and our refuge, just as Psalm 46 says. And Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God so that we can know that he is our refuge and strength. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We only know that when we spend time in God's word. We need to know his heart so that we can spread his word to those who don't believe, share his word with those who are downtrodden, be hope to those who are dying. We cannot do that unless we're in his word, feeding and nourishing, being nourished by God. So how do we do it? Well, this happens in many and various ways. Number one, Every time you go to God in his word, every time you spend time opening that Bible and sitting with him, you are being fed and nourished by God. Fed and nourished by him. Yes, you are. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus enters into your life and gives you the hope and the promise and the salvation that he has brought for you. Every time you are connected to his heart. James says, draw, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This is how it's done, my brothers and sisters. Every time we celebrate, well, when you had the gift of baptism, you were fed and nourished by God. When we celebrate the gift of baptism in the lives of other, others, when we celebrate the gift of baptisms, and some of us make the sign of the cross when we say the invocation, that's remembering that the cross was made upon our forehead and upon our heart in our baptism and celebrating our baptism. Some Lutheran churches even have little bowls of water, not holy water, just plain water, right as you enter the sanctuary. And we did this in, in college and in seminary, where you dip your finger in and remember your baptism with the water on your head in the shape of the cross. In these ways, when we say the Apostles' Creed, we're remembering our baptism. In these ways, by celebrating baptism, God is pointing us to the fact that in his word, by the power of his Holy Spirit, he has made you his child, loved, forgiven, and redeemed forever by the resurrection of Jesus and the death of Jesus and his resurrection. He has made you his child. He has given you his kingdom. And if God is for you, no one can be against you. And then, of course, every time Jesus stands at the table that he has set for us at the Lord's Supper, and he so graciously says, come and eat. Come and feast upon this meal today. As Jesus, through this wonderful sacrament of the Lord's Supper, sweeps into our lives. A mystery above all mysteries, right? We can't truly understand it as bread and wine are the body and blood of Jesus. It just is. It doesn't become. It isn't magical. It's nothing like that. It just is by the power of his word. Bread and wine with God's word is the body and blood of Jesus. And as we eat of it, and as we drink of it, God pours forgiveness and grace and love into our lives. He strengthens our faith. He gives us peace. And he whispers into your ear, I am with you always. He calls you by name. Ken, Nancy, Joe, Bob, David, Elizabeth, Stephanie, he calls you by name, and he says, I love you unconditionally. As you hold to the bread, which is his body, and hold to the blood, which is his wine, clinging to the very Jesus whom the disciples were able to touch, you touch in the sacrament, clinging to the Savior of the universe. He whispers into your ear, 
I love you unconditionally. And looking back to last week, nothing will separate you and me. It is crucial for our souls and our salvation to be nourished by God in his word and in sacrament. St. Peter says very, very sternly, be careful, stand on guard. Your enemy, Satan, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. It doesn't take us long to see that there are people who are once in faith who are losing faith or have lost their faith in this world because they have not been on guard. And that's the reality. The question people ask all the time is, can somebody lose their faith? Yes, scripture clearly shows that, unfortunately, and it is sad. God never gives up on them. We never give up on them because God's love goes forever and he already saved the world. But faith, that treasure, can be lost by our inaction to spend time with God and by our action of spending time in sin. We desperately need to stand on guard and be alert by immersing ourselves in this nourishment from God in word and sacrament. Please understand that. I'm not telling you to do this because the church wants control over you. I'm not telling you to do this because it's organized religion. I'm not telling you to do this just to have something to do. I'm not trying to burden you. I am telling you because I love you. And I'm telling you because I love Jesus. And I'm telling you because you mean the world to me and I cherish each and every one of you. And I'm telling you because I want to spend eternity with you. Connect with God daily and be fed and nourished by him. And when you do, you will draw close to him, he will draw close to you. And when you do, you will know his heart. And when you know his heart, you will see that his heart is unconditional love, no judgment, no grudges, and grace and forgiveness for everyone. And when you see that, you too will begin to practice that in your lives, and then the world will change one heart and life at a time as you carry that wonderful sustenance, the wonderful nourishment, the wonderful strength of a God who loves you and forgives you by the power of his word and sacrament with you everywhere you go. So go. Be with God. Just be with him. Fight the temptation of Satan. He's already lost. Jesus already won the victory. You have the time. You have the ability. Feast upon Jesus. In his name. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of our salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Indeed, in him you have called us into your kingdom to come and eat all the wonderful food and to feast with you without cost, without price. You have set this banquet for us, a banquet and feast of love, mercy, grace, forgiveness, and salvation, and eternal life. A banquet where we are the treasured and special guests, all because Jesus Christ came into this world to die for us and to rise for us. All because you have made us your children in baptism and sustain us in faith and word and sacrament. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in the midst of this world where chaos reigns supreme, doing things that we can't understand with all the negativity, Help us to be rooted in your food, your heavenly food, your word and your sacrament, to be nourished and strengthened by you that our hope may be alive and well within us, that your love may fill us and that we may share that love with all people so they too may come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have given to your church throughout the world the precious gift of the administration of word and sacrament. May your church everywhere truly focus on that only duty that she has, that politics and opinions and all the rest of the world will fade away, that your church may truly share the word of Jesus and his sacraments in love, without judgment, and with great freedom, peace, hope, and salvation. What a gift you've given us. And Lord, we can't do that without our wonderful members, without your people. We can't do that unless we go out as the church. We can't do that unless we go out as your people into the world, declaring the wonderful deeds of him who calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Make us to be the presence of Jesus all around us so we may grow your kingdom and decrease the kingdom of hell. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, our heavenly Father, Please have mercy on our world and fill your world with peace and love in every nation, in our land, in our communities, in our church, in our homes, and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, 
we also pray that you will have mercy on us and extend to us the healing power of Jesus in our world. Please end this virus. Please. Please bless uh, the doctors and, and medical people and scientists who work on a vaccine that a healthy and safe vaccine will come quickly. Please bless those same people that healthy and good treatment will come quickly. And please be with all those who are sick and heal them and be with all those who are in mourning over this virus as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you command us to pray for our government. So today we lift up to you all those who govern over us at the local, state, and national levels. Grant them godly wisdom and their guidance. Help them to have hearts of love. Um, put a, a, a lock over their mouths and help them say only those things which are beneficial and building up. Please give them godly wisdom as they rule, that they may share your wisdom with us and lead us, Father, in all justice, peace, and joy. Send your holy angels to watch over them and keep them in your care. We especially thank you for the men and women of our armed forces who are the ones who really work on our behalf every day. Be with all those men and women. Send your holy angels to be with them and their families. Keep them in good health. We especially pray for Andy, Colton, Taylor, William, Jonathan, Rich, Bryce, Chase, Hayden, Joseph, and Jordan. We also remember that there are um, first responders right outside our back door who do the very same thing for us, who keep us safe and work diligently on our behalf. For paramedics, firefighters, EMTs, police officers, and for all those in the medical field these days, we ask that you keep them all in good health, bless them and their families, and provide for them. Especially we pray for Matt, Raphael, Deidre, Martin, Kelly, Brian, Jeff, Matthew, Mark, Alexander, Molly, Ann, and Laura. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the God of our salvation, the God of hope and life. In your resurrection, you have opened the kingdom of heaven to us so that we may live forever. Be with all those who mourn and grant them that hope and confidence in this promise and gift to us. Be with the family of Esther and John and Florence. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the great and mighty physician. When you walk this earth, you had compassion on those who were sick and ill, and you touched them with your healing hand. Grant that same healing touch to all your servants and bless them with the gift of medicine as well. Especially today, we pray for Anna, Bill, Michelle, Elliot, Jerry, Frank, Philip, Kenneth, Joel, Jeff, Bob, Tony, Tim, Taylor, Trish, Howard, Shannon, Kathy, Paula, Cynthia, Gary, Davy Ann, Greg, and David. Sunday, Ralph, Lindy, David, Rosa, Dick, Doris, Phil, Charlie, Rosa, Linda, Clyde, Charles, Leo, Leo, Simona, Albert, Kathy and Randy, Selena and Drew, Isaac and Misty, Joe and Linnell, Wesley and Nick, Carol and Teresa, Angie, Clem, Ted, June, Larry, the Molina family, Sandy, Kurt, Anthony, Cindy, Nancy, Martha, Pat, and Jerry. We also lift up to you the shut-ins of our congregation, Dixie, Isla, Kay, and Marcy. Be with your, these your servants, heal and restore them. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you hear the prayers of our heart, and we thank you for this. Today, we lift up the prayers of your people for special requests. We pray for Lori, Laura, and Jordan, Emily, David, Richard, Ivy, Suzanne, Chloe, and Jonathan. We also pray and lift up to you those who are suffering uh, during times of unemployment and, and a lot of confusion and a lot of stuff going on. Be with them and help them, provide for them, give them peace, especially we pray for John, Tiffany, Monica, and Javon. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for hearing our prayers and for granting us uh, your peace in the midst of this world. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Once again, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. You have no idea how much your being there not only blesses our congregation, but blesses my heart. It really does. I've said it many times, it's kind of hard today being a pastor because everything we've known is different and it's kind of hard to tell what's going on and is the congregation healthy, but I know we are. God has blessed us through you in so many ways and part of that is you being there. So thank you from the depths of my heart. I pray that your week will be blessed. I pray that the love of Jesus will seep into every pore of your body and that not only will it restore you, that it will flow out of your body to restore others as well. 
Stay healthy, stay safe, and I look forward to the day that we can be together again. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now hear the good words of our Lord and receive his blessing upon your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thy peace, Lord.